NBC 10 News starts now. Right now at six, roads turning into rivers, a powerful storm already creating problems in parts of our region. Cars wading in high waters. The Jersey Shore preparing for impact, whipping winds and waves crashing along the shore through our area. And you can see just how massive it is on our NBC 10 first alert radar. We are in for hours of rain this evening. Let's start with NBC 10 First Alert meteorologist Michelle Rotella with what we're seeing right now. Michelle. Right now seeing that steady heavy rain across the area already seen some widespread roadway flooding that we'll continue to see as we go on throughout the rest of the evening, especially into those overnight hours, urging you to stay off the roads for sure. And then on top of that, some very strong damaging winds. We have yet to see the heaviest of the rain and the strongest of the winds, believe it or not. You talked about how large the system is massive here impacting the Midwest parts of the Great Lakes. We can see it across the eastern seaboard here all the way down to past Jacksonville at this point with central Florida and across parts of the Carolinas. They're seeing that severe weather. There's the backside of the storm again. So many components of this with them dealing with the winter weather. Here's the severe part where you can see tornado watch areas here all the way up through North Carolina extending now into Virginia where they have ongoing tornado warnings. We also take you into parts of our mid Atlantic area Area. Here where parts of Maryland are seeing some aerial flood warnings and some flood warnings ongoing. And now we see here in Philly that we have that steady heavy rain that has been ongoing. It's been picking up where you have pockets of more intense rain from time to time, taking you in across, uh, I'd say, the suburbs here and then close to the Lehigh Valley. I just wanted to uh, kind of go in here and show you some of the rain rates that we're seeing over a quarter inch an hour in some locations. Then you go further north and I saw over an inch per hour. So rain rates are really picking up across the region. On top of that, we have storm reports that are starting to come in across the area and a lot of these picking up some gusts over 59 miles per hour, especially into Salem County. We're seeing that Newcastle County. So gusty winds already ongoing. You can see the flood reports that are ongoing for parts of Maryland as well. I anticipate that we'll see that actually in fact look at this just now popped on our map so right around Philadelphia and extending into our suburbs now at this time I'm pretty sure NWS chat uh, the National Weather Service will have said that this is now a flood warning so so much to cover Brittany ship will continue to time out the rainfall and talk about the winds coming up in just a few Jackie Michelle thank you now let's check out the road conditions from storm force 10 this is the view one of our photojournalists driving along right now he is on the Pennsylvania Turnpike between Quakertown and Lansdale. NBC 10's Deanna Durante has been covering the suburbs in Pennsylvania for us this evening. She joins us live from West Conshohocken with the latest there. Deanna? Well, from Hatboro to Lafayette Hill, we're getting alerts from Montgomery County of roads that are closed now to traffic and uh, text messages alerting those people who subscribe to those messages. Don't go around those barriers. It may just be a little bit of water that you think right now, but it could become very dangerous. Just a little while ago, we got some new video out of Westchester to show you what's been happening there and how crews are preparing all over the region. A couple of hours in and East Barnyard Street is now closed to traffic. It's not the only sign rain is hitting Westchester hard. Over on East Chestnut and Montgomery, more water covering the roads and first responders say it's only going to get worse tonight. Since this morning, firefighters at Gladwin Fire Company have been getting ready. We'll have staffing moving in here throughout the day and into the evening and overnight hours, making sure that the trucks are staffed and we can get out uh, expeditiously and handle whatever emergencies thrown at us. And it's not just the fires these crews have to worry about. This is one of the region's highly trained water rescue units. They've seen it all. After Superstorm Ida rushed through, the team made water rescues across the region. These pictures showing the efforts to get a man who was holding on to a tree. As he was floating away in the car. So it was a, it was kind of a do or die situation for that gentleman. And while crews may get to the scene fast, it does take time to set up the equipment to prevent further dangers. Cables were tied to trucks to help manage the boats and keep the rescuers afloat. And while the man was saved, crews want you to know the outcomes of flash flooding can be deadly. Don't drive around barricades, turn around, don't drown, follow all the rules that everybody's been saying for years and years and years. And unfortunately, to this day, we still have people that don't think those rules apply to them. And they're the ones that we have to go out and rescue. And you're putting first responders' lives at, at, at risk. You're putting the other public members that are trying to help save you. 
Now again, part of this storm, the heaviest part is expected to happen uh, later on tonight and in the overnight hours. So if you have to go out, be very careful, be vigilant. And if not, stay home. That's the very latest reporting live in West Punchahawk and Deanna Durante, NBC 10 News. Deanna, thank you. Some lighting issues there. We do know there are some power outages in our area. We'll keep you updated on those. Deanna, thank you for that. Turning now to South Jersey, this is the current situation in Brooklawn, Camden County. The Brooklawn Circle looks more like a river. The road is currently blocked off. And just take a look at the first alert radar. We are in for several hours of rain, and you can see right here on Broad Street that rain coming down. Yeah, the city of Philadelphia predicts the Delaware and Schuylkill Rivers will flood from this storm. And for a look on what to expect later, let's check in now with NBC 10 First Alert meteorologist Brittany Ship, who is in the saddle for us. Yeah, we have definitely been tracking this for the past couple of hours. We have another few hours left to go. And in fact, some of the heaviest rain is still going to be heading in our direction. Same thing with some of our strongest wind speeds. So the bottom line is it is best to stay home. If you have to go out, do not cross through any flooded roadways. Uh, we're going to see even lower visibility from some of the heavier downpours that are heading our way. And also a reminder, it only takes 12 inches of fast moving water for you to lose control of your vehicle closer to 18 inches, even if you have an SUV or a truck. So it does not take a lot. And a lot of the rivers, creeks and streams are forecast to go above that 12 to 18 inch range. So as we look at our radar shot, we've been saying this system stretches from Boston down towards uh, Florida here, just to the south of our region, even parts of Virginia here seeing tornado warnings on some of these thunderstorm cells that are starting to move through. We have flush flooding concerns and a tornado watch that again stretches as far north as Virginia. So as we look at what we're dealing with right now, uh, we have had different flood warnings that we've been tracking for you affecting Montgomery County, Chester, Philadelphia, up towards Bucks County, Mercer County, and then another one over Chester and Delaware. So these are all of our local rivers and streams that tend to run high. We are going to be dealing with issues overnight tonight into tomorrow. Our radar shot shows some of the heaviest rain right now over Lancaster, Redding, Milford, down towards Westchester, Abington, and our wind gusts have turned even stronger. Look at Wilmington, a wind gust of 56 miles per hour right now. We're seeing wind gusts up to 43 over Philadelphia, 46 over Millville. So of course we have wind alerts. We have a wind advisory staying in effect and it's exactly for that high amount 55 mile per hour wind gusts where you see the yellow there. That's a high wind warning. We could see wind gusts upwards of 65 miles per hour and we still expect some of the heaviest rain to move through right around 8 through 11 p.m. So we'll talk more about that strong line of storms moving into our region coming up. All right, we'll check in in a bit. Thank you, Brittany. And for those areas that you may know are prone to flooding, you'll want to steer clear of those roads tonight. NBC 10's Miguel martinez Vai joins us live from Penn's Landing. Miguel, you've been out there for hours now. What is the situation like right now? Yeah, it's ugly out here. So if you can stay home, if you can avoid going out, definitely do so. Meanwhile, uh, police, they did say they'll have more patrols out tonight uh, into tomorrow as they're expecting some flooding in low-lying areas. That includes Columbus Boulevard, where we are right now. You can see the road still open, uh, rain falling, the wind picking up. Uh, but police say they're looking at here, they're looking at Cobbs Creek over in West Philly, and also Kelly Drive asking drivers uh, to be safe if they have to be on the road. Preparations for today's precipitation started early. This morning, police placed barriers nearby flood prone zones like Kelly Drive in case they have to close the road due to flooding, something neighbors in East Falls have seen before. Uh, a couple years ago, we had, uh, we had the flooding in the basement from whenever the storm came through. And um, we're just kind of hoping that this time around, it's not going to be as bad. Uh, we're, we're preparing. We're preparing. We have everything out of the basement. We're, we're hoping, uh, we hope we don't get hit that too hard this year. Police also hoping the storm spares Philly any heavy damage, but preparing for whatever the rain and wind bring our way. Ultimate goal is going to be to get through this onslaught of rain um, safely and get things back to normal and get the roadways back to normal as soon as possible. As day turns to night and the storm grows stronger, police asking those who can to stay at home and drivers to drive slowly and carefully. The police department marine unit reminding everyone today while they'll have rescue crews ready and more police patrolling, if you see a flooded or blocked roadway, turn around and find an alternate route. What may look like two inches of water could be two, three feet of water. So if you see flooding, don't go through it. Don't let your ego get the best of you. Drive around it and take another route. 
Yeah, you want to be smart. You want to be safe tonight. Take a look right here. You can see, again, they have extra police in the areas uh, where they say uh, that are fl prone to flooding, including Columbus Boulevard here. Uh, and so the roadway still open. Again, drivers asked to be extra careful on the roadways to keep that distance from the car in front of them and to drive slow. I'll send it back to you. I'm Miguel Martinez Valle, NBC 10 News. All right, Miguel, thank you. And if we sound like a broken record, it's because this is very important. Driving mm. in these conditions can be dangerous. But are drivers heeding caution and staying off the roads? Let's check in with NBC 10 First Alert traffic reporter Sheila Waco, guiding us around traffic delays from 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. every weekday and here tonight <laughs> because of the severity of the issues this evening. 7 a.m., almost 7 p.m., all day long. Yeah. Unfortunately, every time I check back in with you, there's a brand new set of issues. We're not even repeating any graphics today because there's been so many problems. Please, please, please be careful as you head out. Here's a look at 676 heading westbound approaching the Schuylkill. We've got a crash out here blocking the right shoulder, blocking the right lane as well. So only one lane is getting by, adding to the delays that we already experience every day around this time already on the westbound vine. Also seeing a lot of flooding as well as down trees across Chester County, Bucks County as well. Chester County dealing with a lot of reports of that. Here's an example. Route 1 southbound right around Cheney Road. This is um, blocking one lane, unfortunately, in that direction, causing some slowdowns. Also on the Pennsylvania Turnpike heading westbound between Ben Salem and Willow Grove. We've got two lanes blocked out here. That's causing some delays almost all the way back to Route 1. Not looking great. Philadelphia area really slow, especially on the Schuylkill and parts of 95 northbound. South Jersey looking pretty messy on 42. Not as bad as I would expect on 42 right now heading southbound, but 76 eastbound, very, very slow as you head down towards 295. Delaware previously had Route 1 northbound completely shut down right around Route 72. That has reopened. Still dealing with residual delays, but looking a lot better through Wilmington as well on 95. Fred, back to you. All right, Sheila, and this is just what you're talking about here. Here's a look at a road in New Ark, Delaware from just a short time ago. You can see the water rising at an overpass there. This is on Stanton Christiana Road. There's a car that seems to be stopped just ahead of that water there. The flooding rains making it difficult to travel tonight. And a note for you out there that we're just getting into our newsroom. The Central Bucks School District will open on a two hour delay tomorrow because of tonight's powerful storm. And meanwhile, from Delaware to the Jersey Shore, people are preparing for the worst. Ted. Yeah, Jackie, the winds are whipping here along the coast and only expected to get stronger and more dangerous as the night goes on. I'm Ted Greenberg, live in Atlantic City with the story from the Jersey Shore coming up. This is NBC 10 News. We are down the Jersey Shore tonight where there are coastal flooding concerns. Live pictures right now from Atlantic City and Cape May. In addition to the flooding, high winds are another concern in New Jersey. RNBC 10 Jersey Shore Bureau reporter Ted Greenberg joins us live from Atlantic City. Ted. Well, Fred and Jackie, yes, the high winds are the biggest concern here at the Jersey Shore tonight. And man. We're getting pounded by those winds here on the ninth floor of the Showboat Hotel. The wind howling and a, uh, an empty boardwalk below us. And take a look at the ocean. It is really very rough right now. And in the last few hours, we've seen it come right up to the base of the dunes there. That beach was already badly eroded. And as you can imagine, the ocean continuing to wash more of that sand away and erode those dunes. A very nasty night here at the Jersey Shore, only expected to get worse and more dangerous in the hours to come. Before the winds pick up even more, work was winding down at this construction site in Ocean City. The job site's pretty clean and, and ready to go. Crews building a new house along the beach, making sure nothing goes airborne. They try to limit the amount of material on site, whether it's bringing inside of the garage or not having it delivered at all. Um, so all those, all those precautions were being take, taken over the last 24 hours. A high wind warning up along the Jersey Shore. Gusts could reach 65 miles an hour tonight bringing the potential for falling trees and power outages. Tonight is a good night to stay home. Please avoid driving if at all possible. And if you have to drive, go slow, use caution. On a beach in Ocean City already badly scarred by the power of the surf, public works crews hauling in loads of sand to try to keep this erosion from getting worse. Eventually be up on the boardwalk, but we're just trying to prevent 
it as long as possible so we don't lose all like the Dune fans. Yeah, we've got the beach erosion going on. It's raining right now, not as hard as it was earlier today. And again, the winds whipping here. We are feeling them nine stories up here at the Showboat Hotel. So you've got the coastal flooding as well. A lot of factors in the mix here at the shore tonight. You heard the governor, good night to stay home. Live in Atlantic City, where it's very windy, I'm Ted Greenberg, NBC 10 News. Hopefully, during your live shots, you were able to go inside and get warm and dry and out of that oh, yeah. wind for a little bit, Ted. Excellent. Okay, glad to hear it. Thank you. And here is a live look at Philadelphia International Airport at this hour. Passengers who were trying to make it out of town found themselves stuck for a few hours today. The website FlightAware notes over 130 flights were delayed and over one dozen flights were canceled. It's recommended to check your flight status before you leave for the airport. It is a busy night in the Weather Center. NBC 10 First Alert meteorologist Michelle Rotella is tracking this powerful storm and still a lot more to go tonight. A lot more to go and we mentioned that the heaviest of the rain and the strongest winds would be between 7 and 11 or even midnight and it's not even seven o'clock yet, not, a, not according to my clock. So we have a long way to go and we're still seeing a lot of this heavy rain working its way across the area. We continue to see some flood warnings popping up. So the ongoing flood threat will be with us even throughout the day tomorrow. Strong to damaging winds. You saw where Ted was. That is where we're anticipating some of the strongest wind gusts and already getting reports of winds over 59 miles per hour. This is just an expansive system stretching all the way down to the southeast up here now Pressing into New England. You can see the backside of it impacting parts of the Midwest. For us, again, look at what we're seeing here. Lots of heavy rain still to come in our direction. Parts of Maryland already have flood warnings that are ongoing. You can see the flash flood warnings that are ongoing for Richmond. We don't have that severe component as far as a tornadic activity, but again, it's the flooding that is our huge concern here. Where you see those pockets of yellow, that is the intense rain. And if I were to just kind of uh, pinpoint here and click on it and see how fast the rain is falling. Your rainfall rates would be anywhere from, I'd say, a quarter to half an inch plus per hour in some of these locations. So taking you into New York, Newark, where you're seeing a lot of that heavy rain pressing its way on through and then stretching all the way up into the suburbs as well. We've also been getting a lot of reports for non thunderstorm wind damage so those strong wind gusts as I mentioned you can see all of them by those icons there and then also some flooding reports now coming in for Chester County and so I think that we'll continue to see a lot of these reports populate across the screen if I was to expand this out for you you would see so many all across parts of the southeast and working their way up to the mid-Atlantic how much rain has fallen here since midnight you can see over an inch is what we're tacking up there in Westchester that's where we have some of those flooding concerns also Doylestown is seen over an inch of rain. We still have so much more to go as we get into the seven o'clock hour. This is where we really pick up with intensity. Look at those deep shades of red, all of that heading in our direction. So working its way from the southwest to the northeast. This is the direction that we're going to be seeing this cold front sweep its way through. As we get the surge of southerly flow, you're going to see these temperatures rise potentially into the low 60s. So that should tell you something uh, in January with temperatures in the 60s. How strong those winds are pulling in all of that moisture and, and a lot of that warmer air into our region. So lots to work with here. Flood warnings again. These are ongoing flood warnings and now they've been extended for all of Bucks and Montgomery County. Chester County stretching down into Delaware County, Philadelphia County now stretching into parts of South Jersey and Newcastle County and even looking like uh, we're into Lehigh County and Berks County at this time. So again, we have those flood warnings. We still have our flood watch that will continue to go until 6 p.m. tomorrow. We also have our coastal concerns, especially down the shore and especially during high tide. That is where we're really concerned. And then our river flooding forecast. I think that this will be a problem as we go on throughout the overnight hours and then into tomorrow morning as well. Once we see them rising and then this will stay with us as we go on throughout the day tomorrow. We still have some additional rainfall to go uh, one to two inches still in some areas. Plus we could see even heavier rain. And I mentioned the timing on this, the heaviest downpour. 7 to 11 uh, and then again down trees that could create a lot of power outage issues that we're anticipating especially as we go on here wind alerts are going to stay with us through tomorrow morning you have the high wind warnings all the way up the coast and again where we could see gusts over 70 miles per hour still a lot more to get through we'll tell you all about it coming up after
after the break. This just in, if you plan on riding Amtrak tomorrow, you might have to drive. Amtrak canceled a number of train destinations, around 20 trains tomorrow on the Northeast Regional Line, Acela, as well as the Keystone. So we'll keep you updated on that and make sure you sketch, you check the scheduling. Coming up tonight at 7, we'll have the very latest on this powerful storm and check in with Aaron Baskerville down the shore. NBC 10 News starts now. Right now at 7, we are tracking heavy rain, widespread flooding concerns, and str strong winds throughout the region. NBC 10 First Alert meteorologists are tracking this powerful storm in all three of our states. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Fred Shropshire. I'm Jacqueline London. The roads and airports are busy. At Philadelphia International Airport, so many flights were delayed. Airplanes are taking off and landing. We can tell you that. Meanwhile, Amtrak is canceling dozens of trains scheduled for tomorrow. We are tracking rain and the strong winds that can knock down trees and create power outages. NBC 10 First Alert meteorologist Brittany Ship tracking the storm and as it makes its way throughout our area. Brittany? Yeah, and that is part of the concerns there, those power outages, the flooding concerns for our local streets, rivers, streams, and creeks. And by the way, the heaviest rain and the strongest wind speeds are just about to move into the region now through 11 p.m. So the reminder is do not try to go through any flooded roadways. We are going to see our visibility decreasing even more due to those heavy downpours, and it only takes 12 inches of fast-moving water for you to lose control of your vehicle. Even if you have an SUV or a truck, it only takes 18 inches. And and we are forecasting for many of our rivers and creeks for a lot of those levels to rise above a foot or even a foot and a half. So now we're looking at our radar shot. You can see how massive the storm system is stretching from Boston down towards Florida here. We are dealing with the heavy downpours and the heavy rain, but we're looking for these kinds of lines here that you're seeing just off to the west that will be tracking into our region as we go into the next several hours here. So we could see some of the heaviest downpours over the Philadelphia region. This would be around 937 places like Camden 945. So this is why we're saying now until about 11 p.m. We are going to be dealing with some of these pockets of blinding downpours moving throughout the region. You can see just to the south of us. We have tornado watches flash flood watches and warnings for our area specifically on some of our rivers and some of our creeks here. Uh, we do have these flood warnings that are going to stay in effect until tomorrow and in some locations until uh, Thursday. So this latest flood warning issued for parts of Newcastle County, the Christiana River there. So again, if you live by any of these rivers or creeks, you just want to take extra, extra precaution as we go into our overnight hours. Currently, we're seeing the heavier pockets over Westchester, Milford, and we want to talk about our wind gusts Peak wind gusts today up to 43 miles per hour in Philadelphia, 56 in Wilmington, and 46 mile per hour wind speeds near Atlantic City. Right now, they're sustained in Wilmington, or we're gusting up to 53 miles per hour in Wilmington and 39 in Philadelphia. Coming up, we'll check in with First Alert meteorologist Michelle Rotella, and she will talk more about what we can expect for the rest of tonight. Jackie. Brittany, thank you. Yeah, the sound of the waves right there crashing on the Jersey Shore as the storm starts to wreak havoc on our area and crews preparing ahead of the possibility for coastal flooding. We are keeping a close eye on these concerns. NBC 10's Aaron Baskerville joins us live from tonight from Atlantic City. Aaron, what are you seeing there? I can see the wind blowing at least. Yeah, Fred and Jackie, the main issue right now, of course, is the wind. Like you said, there's just been serious gusts and moments. It's literally moving me a couple inches from my spot. That's what we've been seeing. But there was a lull a little while ago, around six feet, uh, 615 or so down here in Atlantic City. We're on Atlantic Avenue. There was not much rain, not much wind, but everything since, of course, has picked up. Right now, the state of New Jersey is under a state of emergency. That started at 5 o'clock. Let's get to some of the video that we shot just a little while ago ago when things were a little bit calmer than they are right now. You're looking at some video in Ventnor in one of the neighborhoods over there. Just a little bit of pooling and ponding on the side streets and in that neighborhood, but not too much to worry about at this point. But once again, it's the wind that has certainly picked up just a little while ago. Of course, they're also concerned about any more flooding that could happen over the next couple of hours. Before the state of the state address for Governor Phil Murphy, he had a chance to talk about the storm and what people should do when this thing comes flying through later on today. Here's what he had to tell us. 
tonight is a good night to stay home. Please avoid driving if at all possible. And if you have to drive, go slow, use caution, and plan for extra travel time. If you're experiencing an outage, please report it immediately. Having multiple storms happen in the last few weeks, ground saturated, can't hold a lot of water. So any wind uh, has the potential to bring trees down and cause power outages. Well, yeah, that's going to be a major concern. The wind gusts are certainly here, as you can tell in my live shot. I can also just tell you at my home, we've lost power two or three times already. So that concern is real. So that is something to be abreast of. Of course, we're going to be out here all night fighting this wind. And uh, we'll give you another update tonight at 11 o'clock, excuse me, uh, with any damage or flooding that will happen here in Atlantic City. For now, we're live along Atlantic Avenue. Aaron Baskerville, NBC10 News. All right, Aaron, hopefully you can get inside and, and warm up. Thank you for that report. And our coverage of this storm is far from over. NBC 10 First Alert Meteorologist Michelle Rotella also here this evening to take us through what the rest of the night looks like. What can we expect, Michelle? Well, all day we've been saying pretty much now through midnight is when we're going to see the worst of it. And I know you may be thinking we're already seeing some pretty bad conditions. You saw Aaron's video right there, his live shot of the, the just the strong gusty winds. We still have the heaviest downpours to come. This will create some huge issues when it comes to the ground being saturated and some strong gusty winds. We've already seen new numerous trees that are down across the area, even some power lines that have come down. I've seen uh, some reports of that as well. So that will continue to happen. Our also concerns are of the rising rivers, the creeks and the streams that flooded roadways are a huge concern that we're already seeing. And I expect more of them will continue to be flooded as we go on throughout these important hours here. So pay attention. There's this line that is going to just blow across the area. It's the cold front that we've been talking about that's attached to this really strong area of low pressure. And so you're going to get this surge of winds coming in from the south, so much so that rainfall rates could be over an inch of out, an inch an hour, and we could get one to two inches of rain and additional rainfall on top of what we've already had. So we have temperatures in the 60s. You have winds that are going to be strong, gusting over 65 miles per hour potentially. And then on top of that, we are going to see the potential of the rivers that will be uh, flooding as well. As we go into tomorrow morning, we could see them go into moderate flood stage. That's the concern. Here's the wind. I mentioned the high wind warnings that are up the Jersey Shore. Also for Sussex County, I really wanted to show you around 9 o'clock and then even past that 10 o'clock. Look at this near 70 miles per hour and also look how far inland this goes. That is why power outages are just a huge concern for us as we continue on through the rest of the overnight hours. So make sure you're prepared in case you do have a power outage in your area, guys. Michelle, thank you. Several streets in South Jersey turning into rushing rivers tonight. This is what it looks like in Brooklawn. That's where NBC 10's Karen Waugh has been over the last several hours. Yeah, it really is quite miserable out here. The rain and the wind have only gotten stronger as the night has gone on. And you can tell just how high the winds are by looking at that sign right there. We've seen it teetering back and forth throughout the night, sometimes going almost horizontal or parallel to the ground. Also, you can see I'm standing in quite a bit of water right now. It's about calf deep right now. It was earlier and about knee high. But the dangerous thing about walking where uh, we are right now is that you never quite know how deep the water gets. That's why it's so tricky if you're going to be driving through areas like this. You really shouldn't try it. We saw a car get stuck along this stretch earlier and had to be towed out. New Jersey Governor Murphy did call a state of emergency yesterday that extends through tomorrow morning because of these high winds and rain and potential for flooding. Camden County says they are prepared, though, for the worst case scenario. All their emergency crews are in place for high water rescues. Their departments are also ready to clear any debris or trees or down power lines that might come down overnight. But this really is a testament to these warmer winters we've been getting in any other January. This might have been a blizzard or a snowstorm, but now we're dealing with this wet weather, this rain that has turned into all this flooding. But of course, like our friends today, all these fellow residents have said, turn around, don't drown, don't try to drive through areas like this. In Brooklawn, Karen Bois, NBC 10 News. Our thanks to Karen. Philadelphia also has areas that are prone to flooding. We want to check in with NBC 10's Miguel Martinez Vai, who has more on some hot spots to avoid in Philadelphia. 
Preparations for today's precipitation started early. This morning, police placed barriers nearby flood prone zones like Kelly Drive in case they have to close the road due to flooding. Something neighbors in East Falls have seen before. Uh, a couple years ago, we had uh, we had the flooding in the basement from whenever the storm came through, and um, we're just kind of hoping that this time around it's not going to be as bad. Uh, we're we're preparing. We're preparing. We have everything out of the basement. And we're we're hoping uh, we hope we don't get hit that too hard this year. Police also hoping the storm spares Philly any heavy damage, but preparing for whatever the rain and wind bring our way. Ultimate goal is going to be to get through this onslaught of rain um, safely and get things back to normal and get the roadways back to normal as soon as possible. As day turns to night and the storm grows stronger, police asking those who can to stay at home and drivers to drive slowly and carefully. The police department marine unit reminding everyone today, while they'll have rescue crews ready and more police patrolling, if you see a flooded or blocked roadway, turn around and find an alternate route. What may look like two inches of water could be two, three feet of water. So if you see flooding, don't go through it. Don't let the ego get the best of you. Drive around it and take another route. Miguel Martinez Valle, NBC 10 News. You can track this storm right along with the First Alert weather team. Download the free NBC 10 app. It'll give you access to the latest forecast and the First Alert radar. Plus, you can also get alerts right down to your location. School districts are starting to make changes for tomorrow. Central Bucks will open two hours late tomorrow. Coming up next, the torrential downpour is having an effect on a popular family attraction in our area. We'll take you there next. And we'll continue to follow the heavy rain. And this is a live look from our Valley Forge tourism camera. NBC 10 First Alert meteorologist Brittany Ship's forecast when we come back. Taking a live look over the city right now, and we have been watching this storm for hours. It was raining this morning. The rain continuing, only getting stronger, as are the winds out there. A lot of concern for flooding and flash flooding in low-lying areas. We are keeping a close eye on it with our First Alert weather team. And now to the latest on this powerful storm moving through our area. The warmer weather this season caused its own set of problems for crops. Now all of this wet weather is hindering the crews working out in the fields. NBC 10's Rosemary Connors spoke to Lynn Villa Orchards about what they've been experiencing. Generally, this would be, you know, shrunken and soft. You know, these obviously not perfect, but still edible. Some of the apples at Linville Orchards in Media, Delaware County are still on the tree. An unusual sight, but not surprising given the warm, wet winter so far. I've never seen it where it's January and it hasn't been cold enough to actually freeze the fruit solid. This storm is all part of the season's twists and turns from Mother Nature that have kept the farm equipment out of the orchards. The muddy conditions in uh, all the fields has been made it very hard. Linville's farm manager, Norm Schultz, explains the rain isn't the only issue. The warm weather this season has affected the strawberry crop from becoming dormant. Generally, after 10 hard freezes, the strawberry plants turn a reddish hue, and that means they're dormant, and so... Uh, you know they're ready to go into the this winter weather, but if you look at these strawberry plants, they're still green. So we're worried about a, a fast cold snap uh, injuring the, the, the plant itself. Today, Lynn Villa Orchards is closed as most of the staff wraps up their winter break. Still, this wet weather is impacting the crews in the fields. Three inches of rain is not as devastating in the winter, but it is... Uh, delaying our work. Um, we need to prune all our fruit trees. As for the strawberries, there will be a big push to make sure they're ready. We're up against the clock in the spring. I'm Rosemary Connors, NBC 10 News. And warm temperatures, 56 degrees right now in January. So mild, too. Yeah. And this is the kind of change in the temperature that mm -hmm. creates a system like this and makes it so volatile, right? Yeah, exactly. So we have this warmer air coming up from the south. But if you remember earlier this morning, we actually picked up another one to two inches of snowfall. So we're just on the warmer end of the system. A live look right now out towards King of Prussia. We've been showing this camera a lot. You can see the heavy downpours here. You can see on our live camera network showing you Philadelphia how fast the flags are blowing. You can see the ponding there down towards the shore near Cape May Valley Forge camera. You can just make out all of these heavy downpours. So as we go into the rest of tonight, 
Right now, including till around midnight, we're going to be dealing with the heavy downpours, our power outages rising, our growing flood threat. We have our damaging wind speeds, which we're going to pick up in intensity as well. And then heading into your Wednesday, we'll still be dealing with our river and creek flooding concerns and a few isolated spotty showers. So the heaviest downpours, as we mentioned, happening now through 11 p.m. We have reports already of downed trees and power lines leading to these power outages. We have the rising rivers, creeks and streams, and then we want to just remind everyone not to drive through any flooded roadways. We also have an updated flood warning here. The lighter green, that's the flood warning north and west, most of the region here. Then uh, the flood threat continues for our roads, our rivers, our creeks, and our streams through the entire area. They're either under a flood watch or a flood warning. As we look at the system, we mentioned the colder part. You can see the snow moving into parts of Boston. Widespread rain over Philadelphia. Just to the south of us, so over the Carolinas, Virginia, that's where we're seeing the tornado watches, the tornado warnings, the severe thunderstorm warnings, and also the heavier downpour. So that's the next big thing we'll be tracking here. You can already see this line setting up just to the west of us. This is another round of heavy rain that's going to be tracking right into our region between now through about 11 p.m. We're also looking at a lot of our storm reports as well. This one coming out of Westville, where it says flooding on US 130 in both directions. All lanes remain closed. This is why we were encouraging everyone to switch up your plans because we knew we were going to see a lot of closures. This is East Vincent Township. It says flooding on Hallow Road, Ellis Woods Road, uh, both directions between Oakwood Drive and Bethel Church Road. So all lanes once again closed. That was at 545. So it's going to be slow going if you do have to go out, but we're just hoping everyone can kind of rework their plans possibly until tomorrow. So no matter where we're flying around, it just shows more and more closures just due to flooding. And this is going to be the concern for us even as we head into tomorrow. So you probably want to allow extra time as you're trying to get to work because you're just not sure which lanes are still going to be closed. So as we look at our radar shot, you can see the yellow, the oranges. These are heavier downpours that are just starting to move into the region. We have lots of storm reports here and we are going to continue to track those isolated downpours moving through. So let's time that out for you. We'll see that line right over our Philadelphia region closer to 10 p.m., starting to pull just to the north of uh, Trenton by 11 p.m. Atlantic City, Cape May also expected to see really heavy downpours. 11 o'clock, we're going to start to wind things down here by midnight. Everything should be off the coast. Then we'll just see the isolated showers remaining. Those stronger wind speeds will start to subside as well. And then the concern is just going to be the leftover river and creek flooding. Here's a closer look at our wind speeds expected to gust between 40 to 55 miles per hour in the next hour or so by 9 o'clock. 40 to up to 60 mile per hour wind gusts down the shore. And by 1030, we're still going strong with wind gusts closer to 60. But by midnight, again, everything's starting to push off the coast and we'll just see those windy conditions instead of the damaging winds. Now, a river flooding forecast, we expect to hit the moderate level for areas like the Schuylkill River at Philadelphia tomorrow. Delaware River, our flood forecast between Burlington and uh, Philadelphia overnight is going to reach the moderate flood stage. And then if you're closer to the Schuylkill River tomorrow morning, minor. Neshaminy Creek overnight, moderate. Perkyoman Creek up to a moderate level by tomorrow. Same thing for Morris River. We'll talk more about what's in store coming up right after the break. All right, we are still tracking a powerful rainstorm moving through creating flooding concerns for us, kicking up our wind speeds. You can see some of the heaviest rain is right over Philadelphia, and we're concerned about this line as well. This is going to lead to blinding downpours if you were to be out driving in it. We do want to talk about our 10-day forecast. We'll see a falling high tomorrow. We'll start off in the 50s and then drop into the 40s as the day goes on. Thursday, mix of sun and clouds, upper 40s, and then a big-time cool down by Sunday. Brittany, thank you, and thank you for watching. I'm Jacqueline London. And I'm Fred Shropshire. We'll see you back here at 11. NBC 10 News starts now. Right now on NBC 10, unleashing its power. Heavy rain and high winds are pummeling our region tonight. And no neighborhood has been spared from the suburbs through Philly, South Jersey and Delaware. This storm has been hitting us for hours. 
And now we're getting a better look at the mess it's leaving behind. Good evening. I'm Jacqueline London. And I'm Fred Shropshire. Here are the latest headlines we're following from this storm. Rivers, creeks, and other waterways have already started to rise, and the risk for flooding will continue through tomorrow afternoon. Strong damaging winds are also bringing down trees and power lines across the area. Right now, the major power companies are reporting almost 190,000 outages across the area. And with flooding, power, and traffic issues that could linger into the morning, many schools have already announced delays or closings for tomorrow. You can see the full list of those sent in to NBC10 right now on our website. We have full coverage from our crews in the NBC10 Weather Center and out in the field showing you the latest conditions. Let's begin with meteorologist Brittany Shipp. Britt, what is the latest on this storm? Well, we're still seeing a lot of heavy rain moving through parts of our region, so we'll show you the big picture on that. And the good thing is, at least it is starting to clear. Clear, but for parts of the area right along the southern parts of Burlington County here north of Atlantic City down towards Cape May where this red line is that is heavy rain still coming down but it's very close to pushing off the coast and again you can already see the edge of the clearing closer to Redding uh, but we are definitely still seeing heavy rainfall rates near Sea Isle City at this time. Philadelphia is still seeing steady, more moderate downpours. And as we look at our estimated rainfall total from this last system, pretty impressive. It's spot on. Anywhere between one to up to three inches of rain have fallen. As you look at Redding, closer to one inch, two inches for some of our suburbs north and west. But the bullseye looks to be right over Ratner here, picking up 3.3 inches of rain. That's a whole lot of rain. So now as we continue to widen out the picture here, we just want to show you the next thing we'll be tracking is that continued threat of flooding. A lot of our rivers, creeks and streams are running high. And so as you're commuting tomorrow, you're going to run into a few flooded roadways. You want to make sure you are taking your time. We've turned on all of our storm reports here. You can see a lot of reports of flooding, a lot of reports of uh, a lot of the rivers running over its banks. So again, you want to be very careful as you're driving through any streets going into tomorrow. You have a batch of that moisture pushing off the coast. We are almost done with this system. We're also adding up our peak wind gusts today. Today, wind gusts up to 51 miles per hour in Philadelphia, 37 in Reading, 56 in Wilmington. Take a look at the Atlantic City Airport. Saw peak wind gusts today of 56 miles per hour. We already mentioned that the rain is pushing off the coast. The wind speeds have died down substantially as well. We have one lingering wind gust at 52 miles per hour in Atlantic City. Coming up, we'll talk more about the flooding threat for tomorrow. Jacqueline. Brittany, thank you. Let's get a closer look at the conditions outside. Our team coverage continues with NBC10's Johnny Archer live now for us. Johnny. Yeah, Jackie, so we've been driving around Philadelphia tonight, checking out some of those problem areas. And for the most part, the roads are okay with the exception of some ponding and wet roads. But now we're starting to see flooding on the roads. We're on Columbus Boulevard right now, approaching the Spring Garden intersection, and police have blocked off the intersection because of flooding within the past hour. Strong winds and flooded roads at Columbus Boulevard and Spring Garden in Philadelphia Tuesday night. And flooding conditions are still expected to get worse. It's ridiculous. It's just raining on us all over the place. Messy, very messy, damp, cold. That's how people are describing Tuesday night around the Delaware Valley. Nothing but rain and wind. Philadelphia police blocking off a part of Kelly Drive because of a tree down in the road. Sidewalks along the popular Main Street in Maniunk, known for flooding issues, nearly empty. The few people found came equipped with their umbrella. Definitely to keep dry. I'm here for a date night, so I don't want to be soaking wet <laughs> for a date night. I want to be dry. The flags blowing along the Ben Franklin Parkway as wind gusts reached up to 51 miles per hour in Philadelphia. Slick roads on the Schuylkill Expressway had cars there slowing down. How are conditions on the road? Hard visibility, not very easy to see. You definitely need your um, high beams and your fog lights on. And, and the windshield wipers. And windshield wipers at top speed for sure. Earlier in the day, businesses in East Falls with flooding problems in the past were preparing for more possible problems Tuesday. Cleaning out the basement, moving stuff around, uh, just kind of keeping stuff away from, you know, front grate and all that. So. So Philadelphia police say they have extra patrol working tonight in areas known for flooding like here at Columbus Boulevard and Spring Guard. And they say the goal is just to get through this onslaught of rain tonight and also just to have roadways back to normal as soon as possible. We're live on Columbus Boulevard, Johnny Archer, NBC 10 News.
All right, Johnny, thank you. Let's go now to our Aaron Baskerville, who is live along Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. Aaron, it's so brutal out there. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jackie and Fred, just about the past 30 minutes or so, it's really picked up extreme driving rain and wind. We're along Black Horse Pike in Pleasantville, and behind me, you can probably hopefully see some flashing lights. There have been emergency trucks here for about two and a half hours. Black Horse Pike was completely shut down, but it opened back up partially about 45 minutes ago. There are sections of some lanes that are shut down because of the flooding on the road, but it's obvious to say that the weather around here made it difficult to get around tonight. It's one of those nights where the wind made everything difficult. Even riding a bike down the sidewalk in Atlantic City became almost impossible. In nearby Vetner City along Edgewater Avenue, we saw water start to take over in that neighborhood. On Black Horse Pike in Pleasantville, flooding forced cars to turn around and look for another route. Tell me what you've been just seeing and experiencing tonight. Just flooding, wind's pretty bad, cars going all over the streets. Uh, again, just flooding everywhere, you know, roads closed off and all. Starting at 5 tonight, New Jersey began operating under a state of emergency. State leaders warned of high winds and driving rain leading to dangerous conditions. Governor Phil Murphy talked about the storm before a State of the State address. Let me say tonight is a good night to stay home. Please avoid driving if at all possible. And if you have to drive, go slow, use caution. More and more roads became blocked off as we drove around tonight. But the concern for some now shifts from the streets to the homes. What else are you bracing for for the rest of the night? More wind. Apparently the wind's supposed to get worse. So yeah, it's pretty much what I'm waiting for. Are you concerned about power outages at your house and things like that? Uh, I live in a city, so most likely I wouldn't be surprised. So, of course, that is the big concern going throughout the next few hours and overnight is those power outages. Atlanta County has about 7,000 or so of those, and, of course, that could go up. But you saw in that interview that was easy work there compared to what's happening now. There's an old gas station behind me with an overhang, and the wind is just shaking that overhang back and forth, back and forth, almost like it's going to completely fall down. So the wind is brutal. It is serious. It's obvious. Be careful if you're going out tonight. For now, we are live in Pleasantville, Aaron Baskerville, NBC 10 News. Boy, incredible effort tonight to you, Aaron. Relentless rain, almost an understatement. Thank you for your efforts. Boy. More flooding issues in South Jersey. Check out this scene on Brooklawn Circle in Camden County. Water was flooding the road and the wind was blowing a construction sign, making it almost horizontal with the ground. And look at this, more flooded roads in Newcastle County. Heavy rain causing the water to build up at this underpass along Stanton Christiana Road in Newark. As the flooding and weather damage grows, expect more road closures. In Upper Makefield Township, Bucks County, police there have been busy with at least nine road closures. Yeah, and the risk for flooding will continue until tomorrow. Keep that in mind. If you notice rising water while you're driving, remember to turn around, don't drown. If flooding starts to happen in or near your home, unplug any electrical appliances if you can do so safely. Call your power company or call 911 if you start to smell gas and avoid walking into any standing water. Driving through this storm was no picnic as the heavy rain started at the height of the evening rush. Our crews made their way through bumper to bumper traffic on the highways in Camden County. Train service hasn't been spared either as we take a look at 30th Street Station. This just in from SEPTA service on the Paoli Thorndale line will be suspended until at least 1 p.m. tomorrow. Amtrak has also announced delays and cancellations for tomorrow. And of course, you can count on NBC 10, the app as this powerful storm moves through the area. It has the latest weather and traffic alerts, a list of school closing and delays, and also hour by hour forecast for your neighborhood. As the winds are starting to die down, the damage is left behind from the strong rain and the gusty winds. You can see some of this damage here and the debris on the road, a tree down in a home, West Biddle Street in Westchester. Also, Yardley Bucks County, well, here is that tree on a home. 
wire at the intersection of Langhorn Road and Hunt Drive. Some damage there as well. The tree that fell down on the house, that's what you're looking at right there. This is in Yardley, Bucks County. Yeah, and this is what we're dealing with at home. And just to give you an idea of how big and powerful this winter storm is, check out Ottumwa, Iowa. While the Delaware Valley was being pelted today with rain, they were being blanketed, blanketed by snow. Look at that. And then there's the trail of destruction in the deep south. A series of suspected tornadoes swept across the Florida panhandle in southwest Alabama today. One person in Alabama died when the wind toppled a mobile home. Falling trees also killed a pair of men in Georgia. Such an active day leading into a busy night. NBC 10 First Alert Meteorologist Brittany Ship joining us with the latest on this powerful storm and what's next. Yeah, well, the good thing is a lot of the heavy rain is just pushing off the coast. So we're still seeing on our cameras here the heaviest rain right along that shoreline. So we're talking Atlantic City, Cape May, and that is basically the end of it. And we'll start to see calmer conditions as we get into tomorrow. But for Philadelphia here, you do have those isolated rain showers. You have the steady rain, decreasing visibility on our camera closer to uh, Cape May and Atlantic City, and you still have some lingering showers near the King of Prussia area. So our flooding concerns, they are going to continue. We want you to be cautious on your morning commute. We're still dealing with cresting uh, rivers, creeks and streams, areas of ponding. It's going to take a while for that water to recede. We are going to see windy conditions going into tomorrow with falling temperatures. We'll have what's called a falling high, so it'll be warmer in the morning, and then as the day goes on, temperatures will be dropping into the 40s. Here's a look at that line of heavy downpours here. You can see it moved right through the Philadelphia region, Delaware, South Jersey, and now it's right off the coast almost. It's closer to parts of Atlantic City at this time, ship bottom as well, so that's where the heaviest rain is, and this stretches all the way up to Tom's River, and it's just about to push off the coast, which is a good thing for us. We're almost done with this. So closer look now once again at Cape May. And again, you can see all of the rain coming down. Looks like there is maybe an ambulance because there is a lot of flooded water on the camera. As we take a wider picture here, we're still seeing steady rain over the Trenton region. Same thing for Vineland, but you can already see the clearing edge here. So we're just seeing a few spotty showers closer to the Reading area. Now we turn on our storm reports. We probably have over 100 storm reports from the last couple of hours here. And some of the gusty outflows right along our shoreline here, upwards of 70 mile per hour wind gusts were just measured with that last little gust that's moving through. So as we fly around and show you, this is at a media here. It says Ridley Creek gauge at media reached minor flood stage. So we're either going to see minor or moderate flood stages going into tomorrow. Marcus Hook, the tidal gauge at Marcus Hook reached the moderate flood stage. So you're going to see a lot of this even as we get into our morning hours. This one is out of Maniong, says Wissahickon Creek has reached its minor flood stage. So again, all of these creeks, all of these rivers, all of these streams are going to be uh, basically overflowing. So either the minor or moderate stage overnight tonight into tomorrow's some locations it will take through the day tomorrow. We also near Island Beach State saw wind gusts of about 72 miles per hour. That was just within the last hour or so. So again, this is almost off the coast. It's just hanging out over ship bottom in Atlantic City. As we put this in motion here, you can see we are just about to see our clearing, which means overnight we're mainly dry with the exception of a few isolated showers as we head into your 6 a.m. hour over Dover Atlantic City down towards Cape May. This is at 6 a.m. By 9 a.m., things are going to be clearing up for us. And the next thing we'll see as we head into tomorrow, chilly conditions and just those cold colder temperatures. The flood watch remains in effect for us. The flood threat is there for our roads, rivers, creeks and streams. We're going to have to watch all of our rivers here. The flooding forecast anywhere in red is up to the moderate level. Anywhere in orange is more of your minor flood stage. So Delaware River at Philadelphia and Burlington overnight, we will reach the moderate flood stage. And then for areas like the Schuylkill River tomorrow morning will be minor. Uh, Neshaminy Creek overnight, moderate. Perkiomen Creek Tomorrow morning, moderate, and then overnight tonight, Morris River on the moderate flood stage. So 
Bottom line, what that means, you just want to be careful as you're driving around. Here's the other big part of the story. 5 a.m., you're at 50 degrees, and as the day goes on, temperatures will be cooling into the mid-40s, a falling high. With those stronger wind speeds, it's going to feel probably closer to the low 40s tomorrow. Our 10-day forecast does show us here we have another chance of rain going into Friday night, drier Saturday, Sunday. But look at those cold temperatures mm. as we head into next week. Our daytime highs are going to be in the 30s and even in the 20s as we get into next week. So uh, it is definitely going to be very interesting, that 10-day forecast to go from the 50s all the way back down to the 30s. Right. We're going to have to watch the wind, too, because yeah. the ground is saturated, and yes. uh, we're going to keep an eye on the trees. Yeah, probably. we have to keep an eye on the trees and even those power lines, too. Yeah. And a lot of people still without power even right now mm. today. So the cleanup is going to take a while as we get into tomorrow. And they'll wake up to see some of the damage and all that debris left behind. Yeah, you want to be careful driving into work mm. tomorrow as well. You still want to stay weather aware. There's a lot of ponding out there. There's a lot of flooded areas, so you just want to take it easy. Great advice. All right, Brittany. And great work today, Brittany. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. If you see weather issues or damage in your neighborhood, see it and share it with NBC10. Be sure it's safe. Then take a photo or video and send it to us through the free NBC10 app. Welcome back. Let's take one last look at the conditions outside as this powerful storm moves through our area. That rain has started to level off, but Brittany, as we were talking about before the wind and flooding, that will still be a factor. Yeah, that's right. The flooding as we get into tomorrow, our wind speeds are dying down, which is great. And we're basically done with these really heavy downpours. They have just started to push off the coast here out of Atlantic City, kind of closer to ship bottom still. But again, we are very close to being done with this entire system in terms of the rain. But the flooding concerns continue. You want to use precautions tomorrow morning on your commute. We still have a lot of cresting rivers, creeks and streams. And tomorrow we are going to see windy conditions, but also falling temperatures. So we're going to start off in the 50s. But as the day goes on, you'll see temperatures falling into the 40s. You'll feel the difference. Brittany, thank you. From flooding to traffic issues and school delays, count on the NBC10 morning team for everything you need to know before you head out the door. We will have live coverage from 4 to 7 a.m. A busy day. Yeah. yeah, it was definitely a busy day. I'm glad everyone stayed safe. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jacqueline London. And I'm Fred Shropshire. Jimmy Fallon is next.